should be live. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. And today we're set up outside. Uh, hopefully it won't be too noisy. Um, I checked for the wind and it's not supposed to be too windy or windy at all, really. Because uh, we don't have a little uh, thing, wind protector for the mic. I need to get myself one of those. Oh, the wind's picking up a little bit. Uh, hopefully there won't be too many people, uh, too much gardening activity because, you know, we're surrounded by houses and a lot of people uh, have landscaping work done. And those things are very, very noisy. Uh, it's unfortunate. I, I wish they were not as noisy. Uh, but uh, this is an experiment. It's like 11 a.m my time we're on july 29th 2019 and if the noise level gets a little too much um, we'll make a note of it and next time maybe do this wee wee hours in the morning or late in the evening that way the hustle and bustle of the day will be reduced aside from that uh, welcome to another live stream we're doing uh, investing in personal finance today open discussion anything goes well, almost anything goes, I guess, but basically in general, anything goes. That's what we've been doing. Uh, hopefully the wind won't pick, up, won't pick up. I do live in a windy city, okay? So it's sort of last minute when I decide to do these things. Uh, if I decide to do it outside, that's what I've been... I had planned on doing a few other ones outside, but the wind was too much. Uh, we might get a couple of gusts here and there, but it shouldn't be that bad. I put on my headphones through the mic just to test it out. Um, if you do, if you guys do find it uh, a little too much, uh, let me know. And uh, if it persists, we might move it inside for today. Uh, but I don't think it should be that bad today. Uh, but we will make a note of it. Okay. Uh, aside from that, uh, we can open the discussion anytime you guys want. Night night 98. How are you doing? How is life? I haven't seen you pop in uh, for a few streams. Hannah, how you doing? How's life? Chicho, I'm Chicho. I'm twitching, twitching Jason. How are you doing? <sighs> Having a late lunch right now and glad to have caught the stream. Awesome, awesome. Great lasagna. I love Chicho. How's life? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. I'm gonna send off some packages today. Uh, eBay packages. Uh, and there's a few eBay auctions that are ending today so i'll send off some more tomorrow maybe if people don't want to hold off uh, on combining shipping with other comics curious devon hello chicho you have your green thumb on today yeah yeah lots of check this out our grapes we got grapes all over this thing right now going on right super cool super cool like like this patio we got uh, I took a couple of pics uh, just to show you guys the setup. So after the live stream, probably today or tomorrow, I'll, uh, most likely today, I'll post the pics on uh, Gab, Mine, twi Twitter, and the Discord, just to s just so you know what the setup is like, uh, what I'm doing. Hey man, how are you? We shug, doing well, doing well. Za, Zachap, ho, oh, how are you, man? How are you? Ayaz, you should adopt a kitten, Chicho, and maybe also a puppy. We had a cat, Ayaz. He passed away last year. So, it's too early. It's too early. I don't want to move from... Uh, you have to live with losses for a while before you fill the gap, right? What is the taxes on investing in stock versus crypto versus penny stocks? Uh, stocks and penny stocks would be the same. Anna, as far as I know, in Canada anyway, I'm pretty sure the United States is the same as well. And uh, if the stock goes up, it's capital gains, right? And that's pretty much the same with cryptos. You're paying on the capital gains. However, with the stock market, Wall Street and whatnot, uh, in Canada, and I'm pretty sure in the United States as well, there are different places where you can park your money, where you get a certain amount of tax exemption. That is not the case with cryptos. If you're making if you're converting cryptos to fiat currency 
then on that note there's a record of you getting money coming in so that's considered capital gains okay so whatever your capital gains taxes are wherever you live okay if you have put money in cryptos and you're buying and trading and hiring services and whatnot on cryptos that is something that you're gonna have to decide what to do with right whenever you feel like adopting another cat just hit me up I live with eight of them oh my god great lasagna that's, uh, that's way too many man no how come you live with eight cats are they kittens that's a lot of cats man and that's also expensive you gotta feed all those uh, cats don't cats aren't that expensive to feed dogs are way more expensive um, but eight cats is a lot I'm pretty sure you don't have any rodents around your house <laughs> Five of them are kittens. Yeah, five kittens. It must have been, right? Kittens are crazy cute, man. Same with puppies. Any any infant child, right? I have a dog. Her name is Libby. She's 10. Nice. 10 years old. You got another... And that's another thing. I, I talked with a friend of mine uh, recently. And she had recently lost uh, lost, uh, lost her, uh, her friend, her companion, uh, her, her dog. And she says she's not into getting another pet anytime soon because the loss was very hard. She doesn't want to deal with that, right? 108 dragons. Hey, Chicho. Second day in a row, I'm able to catch a stream. Awesome. Glad to have you. It's a fun, uh, it's fun doing these things, man. Uh, I like changing the setup, the scenery. So far, we've done three. The, the last three that we did, they're all in different parts of the house so that's sort of a house tour I guess to a certain degree black lab border collie mix nice black labs are really uh, loyal and border collie I don't know too much about border collie but black labs are uh, they're good dog to have cats are love they are they're cuddly how is the sound by the way gang it's not too much. We have a plane going up top. I kicked down the gain a little bit, so I brought the mic closer to myself, so I'm talking closer. My first pet was a beagle. He's 10 years old now, so the circle of life is catching up to him. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, dogs, you know, 15 plus or minus a couple of years is probably max, right? The beard is getting long. Yeah. Yeah like it curious Devin good old boy labs are labs are man labs are good dogs I've been around some labs I've had friends that have labs and stuff British Bulldogs are really nice too dogs and cats are like toddlers who will never speak speak love them my mom has this adorable little Malipu I don't know what a Malipu is I swear he's like a little person. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ducks Victrix. Good morning. How are you doing? Love this outdoor background. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think the key for a healthy pet is exercise, water, and not overfeeding. Yeah, not over. And that's the same thing as human beings. Uh, the one correlation I've seen uh, that people say correlation is causation longevity for human beings is not overeating right and that goes the same with pets and don't feed pets things that they shouldn't be eating like i've seen people feed uh, ice cream to dogs or chocolate to dogs chocolate to dogs is like poison right um, grapes as well i don't think they grapes are as good for them either uh, we don't feed her that much one cup two times a day yeah and that's what it should be yeah too many people overfeed yeah that being said chubby chubby pugs and stuff are super cute <laughs> oh it's a poodle maltese poodle mix cool what type of tree uh do you um do you mention is behind you this is a grape this is grapevine neighbors it's these grapevines are actually from the neighbor's house and they've 
direct we've directed it over the steps coming up to the patio and we brought it up here and I built up this wall this thing here like a couple of years ago a couple of years ago waiting for the vines to come right and this year was the first year that we were able to get it going and it grew these grapes are healthy very healthy they made it all the way up the steps all the way up here and we got like a canopy sort of set up here that gives us a little bit of shade which is fantastic grapes can kill them yeah x how are you doing <laughs> and an occasional treat and an occasional treat what is going on uh what is growing on her grapes she's super fit and loves to fetch run and jump nice i heard it through the grapevine i heard it through the grapevine i heard it through the grapevine investing Mar marvin gay isn't it there's a house across the street from us they've been doing construction on that house inside and whatnot for the last like two and a half years <laughs> it's like the stuff coming out of the house is insane you're like how could they like they're not done yet it's very it's insane looking very high definition chicho am i cool cool that's the lighting maybe it likes it waben how are you doing actually the seeds in apples contain uh, cyanide yeah i do eat apple uh, when i eat apples i do eat the seeds as well uh not all the time but sometimes if the apples like the small ones i eat the whole thing right the only thing left is the stem but you can't die with the seeds of the apple only if you harvest like a ton of apple seeds and you have like a couple of the wind is picking up a little i hope it doesn't a couple of bowls of it or something which you won't why has donald trump grown the u.s economy so much stock market has gone way up the last few years stock market is a is a bubble it's a it's it's basically monetary policy free money for the higher echelons of power and all they've done is either buy back their stocks which kicks up the stock price uh pump it uh, you know it's just a bubble right it's where a, there's a lot of money that has been put into the market since for the last 10 years right so a lot of a uh, lot of money was given at zero percent interest to those in power like we're talking trillions of dollars and those people needed to find a place to put that money to get a certain percent of growth right if you get money at zero percent then if you can put it somewhere and get five percent that's five percent you're making period three percent you're making 10% you're making free money right so all this money was given to those in power and they needed to find a place to park that money one place they parked it they started buying back their own stocks right so the stock price went up and their bonuses are tied to their um, to the performance of the stock so they get bonuses from the company and they're basically looting right the American population and the Canadian population and the Western population as well, right another place that's happened is all this money because it needs to find growth it's putting its money anywhere and everywhere that it can find right there's still money sitting on the sidelines looking for a place to put for growth right less so now than uh, you know 10 8 5 years ago right if interest rates start kicking up all the risky investments people are going to start partially pulling out there's also major geopolitical stuff happening globally where the emerging markets are in, some of them are in deep trouble, right? So people that have parked money in chasing growth in emerging markets or places which weren't too stable, they're just looking for, oh, they're giving 20% return on, you know, every year. <laughs> like, <laughs> crazy, right? Well, the reason you're getting 20% is because it's very unstable and all of a sudden your money can disappear, right? So now because things are shifting a little bit, a lot of money from emerging markets and stuff like this, places that aren't too stable, is going to start flowing into more stable places, right? So there's a lot going on. It's not Donald Trump, 
right? It's not Donald Trump, really. It's the system. Hosey, how are you doing? Yes, Marvin Gaye, nice. The stock market might be overvalued. Might be. <laughs> it absolutely is overvalued. However, the saying is, uh, the, the market can stay unreasonable longer than you can stay liquid, right? So it might do another boost up or it might come down 50%. I build a structure with my grandpa in his backyard that grapevines are now growing on and creating a little canopy. It's a beautiful way to provide shape. It's a beautiful way to provide shape, right? And if your grapevines provide grapes, delicious grapes good grapes when you create a canopy the grapes form and they hang and you can just stand there and eat grapes right phenomenal the poison is in is in the dose poison is in the dose exactly dosage matters dosage matters lonely piggy afternoon chicho hope all is well doing well brother thank you very much or sister Morris, J. Morris, 22. Hey, Chicho. Glad to catch another stream. Glad to have you, man. Why can't I get a, get a chunk? What's to stop me or you from doing it? Why is investing bad? Investing is not bad. Who said investing was bad? It's all a question of where you want to invest your money. For me personally, I will not invest in Lockheed Martin. I will not invest in Monsanto or Bear right that's bare right now i will not invest in microsoft i will not invest in facebook i will not invest in google right even though i have you know i'm putting stuff on youtube and any money that's generating through revenue coming in from youtube google is taking half of that right that's something i cannot control right now uh, when i can control it i will but when it comes to investing investing is not bad you just have to be comfortable with where you're investing your money right i know people that invest in horrendous things that i would never put my money in because i, I wouldn't be able to sleep soundly but they do right they don't care about the larger picture right the grand design right maybe they do maybe that's what they want to see happen right halliburton would i ever invest in halliburton i would never invest in halliburton Okay. Did anyone say investing is bad? Nope. Prince Obama. Prince Obama. Uh, Chicho, what sources do you recommend to keep up with economics? Ooh, there's a few. Um, one of them is uh, is a blog, Martin Armstrong. I've mentioned in the video that I put out um, where I get my sources of information. Uh, Martin Armstrong is good. His blog. I read anything that's not private. He has. You can subscribe and read some of his private stuff. I don't, because I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. I just like getting his take on how things are unfolding. Uh, there's a lot of geopolitics happening that is connected to economics, but they don't present it as economics. But it is economics, right? Uh, so economics is and uh, zero hedge is pretty good too. Zero Hedge is a lot of geopolitics with uh, economic slant. Um, Real News Net covers some economics, which is not bad. Okay, but what you have to t do, uh, Kirstevin, is really appreciate that geopolitics is really economics. Like all all wars are bankers' wars. That's economics, right? They're basically resource wars. That's economics, right? They're transportation, uh, prov providing resources to regions that's economics really right so you have to sort of not distinguish your economics from your politics however uh, you should always look at the underlying data in the geopolitics of what's taking place right never follow the sound bites and media trying to get you uh, angry about a certain situation right Put all of that into context like one of the things just to give you an example one of the things that's happening right now is uh, in hong kong there's a lot of demonstrations of what china mainland china is doing in hong kong bringing in these new regulations and shit like this right and stuff like this right now there's a lot of coverage of that in canada right now huge coverage of that in canada 
However, when the protests in France were happening and are still happening, the Yellow Vest, there's barely a beep in the same media that's covering the Hong Kong protests on an hourly basis, right? So you have to sort of take a look at that and say, okay, why are they covering Hong Kong and not covering Yellow Vest, right? Why aren't they doing that? And that's economics. Okay. There's lots of geopolitics there, but lots of economics as well. You've got to have millions in capital to play the game effectively. It's essentially a pay to win market. Uh, Morris, I disagree that you have to have millions. You could do it with thousands. You can't do it with hundreds. The fees will kill you, right? It'll eat away at you, eat away at your profits. You can do it with thousands. Get your, you know, dip your toes in there. Get a feel for what's going on. You can definitely do it with thousands. Okay. Would you like to invest your life savings in the Venezuelan crypto coin <laughs> called the Pedro? No. <laughs> or uh, the, what the hell is that Facebook one? No. Uh, how about Trump coins? No. Any centralized co uh, crypto is not a crypto. It's a centralized fiat currency, right? Yeah, I think we're officially in modern history's longest bull market is crazy. Longest, yeah. Twitching Jason is longest, but it, it's not a, it's a, it, it's, it wasn't organically generated. It's a scam. Like people are calling it a bull market and it's a bull market across the board everywhere. Like everything has gone up in price. Inflation is through the roof, right? Comic book prices are crazy, very high. Some stuff that was selling for a dollar three years ago is selling for $30 now. Like if you look at some of the comic book hauls we did, especially the ones we did where we bought a thousand books basically from this one seller, right? We bought them all for a dollar basically. Bagged them board in the ship, dollar Canadian. So it came up to like 75 cents US, all of them, right? Uh, if you do it per unit. Some of those comic books that we bought are now $40, $45, $20, $10, right? $50. Like we bought uh, Jane Foster's Thor issue number one to eight for 75 cents a pop, right? Let's say we paid $8 for it. Right now, issue one is going for like $40. Is that a bubble? Yeah, I think so. Will it continue? Most likely, maybe right so there's a bull market in everything right now can it still continue yes however certain things there's a handful of things that did not participate in the bull market gold precious metals are one of them i don't know i haven't checked them for the last little few months uh, but they are starting to kick up as well and that could be the contrarian where other things might come down or whatnot some people say we're going into stagflation. Some people say we're going into another economic boom. Some people say we're going to go into a depression. It really depends on what you're uh, considering. For me, it's all a cycle, right? It's all cyclic, ups and downs. Sell some products, sell some stocks, uh, liquidate some of your assets when they're going up, even if they go up further, right? Take some profits off the table and then build up your reserves a little bit pay off your debt and whatnot and then if you if it's going to continue maybe start buying some things that are lower priced right i want to invest in medical recreational many stocks um okay the the boom uh, three four years ago was a great time to be in it 50 percent. imagine that i would like to invest in marijuana in real estate real estate i wouldn't touch personal uh, cannabis I wouldn't uh, you know I looked into it earlier like two three four year five years ago uh, a lot of them are bubbles a lot of them have major uh, uh, issues associated with them with uh, producing product uh, lots of regulation stuff like this uh, it's definitely going to be booming uh, end of prohibition is here uh, or it's not say legalization in Canada the conservatives They've already stated if they come in, they might roll back the legalization of cannabis. They might prevent people from growing their own cannabis plants, right? Because they're 
fanatics. They're garbage. They're dictators. They don't care about humanity. They only care about profits and their religious ideology, right? So all of that stuff is related to economics. You have to sort of keep tabs on what's going on in politics. And if things are shifting on the political front, there's opportunities coming in place on the economic front, right? What is money, Chicho? Money is anything. Everything and anything is money. My time is money. My comic books are money. My hat is money. Okay. Our conversation is money. Everything can be considered to be money. It can have value, right? Currency is money that is accepted as a forms of um, trade, I guess. Uh, I forget all the terminologies, right? So currency gives money liquidity, right? But currency itself is not money. Currency is a medium of exchange, right? Money is a medium of exchange as well, but it may not be accepted across the board everywhere. Okay. We'll put out a video on all this stuff. Ultimately, I'd like to build a portfolio of rental properties with stock holdings as a next nest egg of sorts, but real estate for the cash flow. Uh, Twitching Jason, you have to decide, uh, figure out where uh, it is reasonable to buy real estate to have as an investment uh, portfolio. It is extremely dangerous to, in certain parts of the world, to go into major debt for real estate right now. Uh, I think we're in a bubble and we're seeing the market turn down a little bit in where I am, which has been a bubble for a long time, right? We might see another bubble come up. It might get inflated again because of Hong Kong. And if things don't cool down, there'll be a lot of mass migration of major capital coming out of Hong Kong, right? To give the real estate another boom, right? You could play that. I personally wouldn't. Right, I personally wouldn't. Right now, in my part of the world, can from a year ago, real estate prices. So, for example, I'll give you just general example. When about a year and a half ago, two years, let's say two years ago, if a house was listed for one million, it was there was bidding war and it would sell for one point two million. Right now, and that house would have been appraised at. 900,000, right? So appraised at 900,000, listed for 1 million, would sell for 1.2 million, right? That's $300,000 above, a third more, sometimes we go for 50% more than what it was appraised for. Right now, if a house is appraised at 900,000, it's selling for 850,000, right? That's a $350,000 difference. So if you bought a house two years ago, that means you pay three hundred fifty thousand dollars over what it's selling for right now. Is that a debt that you want to carry? Okay, this is not this is not the case in every part of the world, but it is here. Okay, and it is in other places as well. I might invest in some good chicken stocks. Uh, it's too cold in my part of the world. Cool, uh, Wabin food uh, may be a great place uh, tech not textiles but food products may be a great place to invest not that I'm doing it but because of climate fluctuations there's gonna be crop failures okay once there are crop failures then certain food products staples will increase in price dramatically and once food prices increase dramatically I think one of the stats that uh, I've read about is once people are spending more than 40% of their of their income on food then you start seeing revolutions happen in those regions can trust is a cannabis holding company uh, that uh, bottoming out at 220 a share right now is it gone down Zari so it must have gone up to like eight nine twelve dollars uh and now it's coming down so it's botting them out around 220 eh? what do you think about the robin hood app i don't know about it uh Zare. and by the way hey Zare, how you doing welcome to no live stream <laughs> check out robin robin hood if you're trading with small amounts 
there are no fees is it I, I haven't I haven't gone into trading markets uh, stocks for a long time and I have no intention of going there okay uh, da, 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 da. yeah curious about the same things all right inflation is pub publicly understated mm. big time big time curious that one. who called the builders oh man these people here but really it's insane like you you think they it's like a multiplex that they've been working on for two years it's just one house <laughs> i guess it's a little too late trying to renovate the place to sell it they do they missed the they missed the bubble peak by like a year and a half two years i just realized you're wearing a long sleeve shirt there chicho i wish i could myself but it feels like 38 celsius right now in montreal ouch and the humidity in montreal too or toronto is a little bit more humid yeah long sleeve i'm sitting under shade a little bit of grape shade i got a little umbrella set up for the computer shade and the camera shade so we don't get sun uh, on the thing it's nice here it's nice what do you think of the 1.5 trillion student debt in the u.s do you think it could be the source of the next economic collapse it won't be the source of the next economic collapse it's just a, a means to keep uh, people enslaved 1.5 trillion is nothing compared to what the economy is right now and what the what the scam was in 2008 the the theft in 2008 was in the order of five to five to ten trillion right like huge 1.5 trillion student debt distributed individually to people who won't be able to get out of that and have to they're basically slaves for life right um so it's not gonna bring the econo econ economy down there are other things that might but the student debt bubble won't um no economist but a glance it seems to me to be identical to the housing bubble all backed by massive amounts of subprime loans yeah it is it is it's the same scam twitching jason obama when he came in office he gave the go-ahead to continue to do the same thing right and they are i am religious and everyone i know loves the use of men uh, medical and recreational cannabis nothing against my faith nice Anna greetings blessings dr. P how are you doing Prince Opa I'm from Denmark the real estate is at an all-time high so I would like to save money for the marketing uh, market to drop cash yeah oh I absolutely agree I think right now is the is the time to liquidate as much as possible and pay off debt as quickly as possible once the next crash comes everything will be on sale yeah speaking of downturns don't forget to hold a small percentage of precious metals physical not etfs 100 percent agree uh, maladras too exactly it's the only logical choice for anybody who's even paying a minimal amount of attention housing i really don't see the housing market drop in scandinavia yeah it, it really depends where you're where you are right now there's certain parts of the world uh, where housing is ridiculously cheap okay they say diversity of assets and income is the best way to guarantee yourself so uh, having a salary job to fund your financial uh, prospecting is probably the best bet yeah it's a good idea to have some uh, reliable source of income coming in okay however it's also very important to have multiple sources of income coming in so if you're just working in one job and depending on that place to provide you income with this one company um, and you don't have any investments or you're not playing the markets or you're not looking into um, anything that you can do personally to increase your net worth uh, you're being foolish you're being too risky if the tides turn that company uh, has no responsibility for you they, they, they they'll let you go or reduce your salary or cut back your hours what's the best app to trade on I think that's a general uh, question for the chats I'm not sure I'm not doing any trading right now uh, are you fooling yourself if you think you can time the market yeah I agree with that just however you can not with your nest egg never try to time the market with your nest egg 
however you can try to play the fluctuations okay so you could try to time certain stocks but not the general overall economy i want to invest thousands into chichukai <laughs> Thanks for the support, Anna. Once we get there, I'll uh, I'll let you guys know, right? Love Montreal. I visit it as often as I can, though I don't know it, it could get that hot. Blah, blah, that's crazy. Yeah, Montreal winter, freezing cold, summer, hot, hot, humid. Um, I live a I lived a winter in the in Montreal, and I've spent a lot of summers in Montreal, and I spent some winters in Montreal too, just traveling, checking around. It's a beautiful city, beautiful city amazing food amazing nightlife amazing people uh, the usual rate of return is three percent per uh, three percent here for investing in real estate to rent out usually one bedroom apartment have the biggest return and are the easiest to manage but it's a really safe investment property doesn't devalue uh, Wabin I disagree property does devalue okay all those people say that property never goes down in price they have a 100 year time span on their mind right for a human being you don't care in a time 100 year time span for real estate you should try to time the market do not buy during bubble periods if you are buying during bubble periods then you better be also selling so if you're selling in the same market as you're buying you're okay it washes out right if you're stepping into a bubble market man you're putting a lot at risk if you're selling a bubble you're not as, you're not putting that much at risk the bubble may continue you might be left out of the market until a correction happens but if you're buying and selling in a bubble market it washes if you're buying into a bubble be careful uh, real estate does the value and when it comes to renting you know you're making three percent return right let's say you rent out to people who and I've, I, I know people who do this right they're they're desperate they need to rent out they need the money coming in so they can pay their mortgage right so they take a risk rent out to people that they know are not the most trustworthy they do tremendous amount of damage all of a sudden they're stuck with a twenty thousand dollar bill to fix up the place that's a huge hit if you're a type of person that's looking for three percent return per year right man let me tell you montreal can be brutal both during summer and winter super crazy <laughs> people cutting super crazy hot super crazy cool love my city all the time though. nice what are ets um electronic trading funds or something i forget what it, what it stands for it's basically a basket it's uh what it is is uh the whatever platform it is that you're on whatever uh, trading house that you're in or whatever uh, bank you're you're trading with or trading institution or something they'll take a basket of stocks and they'll say this is an etf for cannabis stocks right so you can buy a basket of companies in just one buy the cannabis etf right or you can buy a REIT which is sort of a ETF to a certain ETF is sort of follows a certain um, a certain sector of the market and it gives you returns based on that a lot of money has gone into ETFs uh, for one understand there's an ETF bubble fans of the 2008 uh, mortgage securities bubble should check out the current corporate subprime loan bubble in the form of CLOs collateral loan obligations as opposed to CDOs same exact asset structure different class of subprime loans yeah the look nothing changed uh, from the 2008 collapse nothing right if anything they made it easier to create these bubbles okay all of that thanks to the Obama administration Texas summer hot Texas winter hot <laughs> top fiber like, by the way taboo top fiber I don't know if you saw my comment on uh, discord I saw taboo with uh, Hardy 
right? Phenomenal show, phenomenal show. I can't believe I forgot about it, right? Because I'm bad with names, it didn't ring a bell, right? What a phenomenal show with Tom Hardy. Sorry, exchange traded funds, that's what it is, exchange traded funds. They tend to track the market, uh, making them good long-term investments. Uh, Treeman, uh, I disagree that they're good long-term investments. If the market is in a bubble, ETS will take some of the biggest hits. It's just a relatively safe way to store savings as opposed to keeping it in the bank. E agreed. A uh, woman, uh, one bedroom apartment is a good way to store. Uh, it's a store of value to a certain degree, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to give you good returns and it's not going to go down in value. Okay, absolutely agree. But long term, I think it's possible to at least be active on the uh, trends of of course uh, of the course of decades i don't think it's considered timing the markets anymore no thanks man i invested last august and i was told that a lot of people don't have ac because it doesn't get that hot in the summer crazy stuff i saw i was excited to see uh, you watched it i'm very excited to see where they take it in uh, nutka san yeah the good and Nutka Sound, by the way, it's west coast of BC. Uh, everything that they were talking about, it was the west coast of BC, west coast of Canada, basically Pacific Northwest, where they were talking about the deal, uh, the, the rights to. Uh, anyway, I don't want to give you spoilers with the East India Trading Company and stuff. So I'll, I'm curious. I'm very excited for that. Uh, thanks for reminding me about it, by the way. Taboo with Tom Hardy is pretty good. I felt like it went under the radar for most people, despite his status as a movie star. Yeah. Uh, how can you say that nothing changed since the subprime crisis, given that there are now more, much more strict lending rules? Much more strict r lending rules for who? For me and you? Like lending rules in Canada just changed for houses um, they brought in new rules a few months ago, right? They made it harder for people to borrow to buy a house. Until a few months ago, it was a free-for-all in Canada. Like, ridiculous. People were, like, th I, was, th I was in a waiting room um, uh, in an office, like, last week, right? And they had the TV going, and I'm just sitting there waiting. And they had a home buying show or something like this, right? so i don't watch that crap but i looked at it right and they showed this gigantic mansion okay it was you know 4500 square foot house with marble flooring marble countertops island the kitchen hot tub and all beautiful house right i looked at the prices it was listed at in the show it was four hundred fifty thousand dollars, right us okay that exact same thing in Vancouver, okay, was selling for three million dollars, right? If you could get it for three million dollars, that's a crazy bubble, okay? What we're seeing in Vancouver, right? So nothing changed. They have stricter lending, uh, borrowing rules, lending rules for who? They gave themselves. Uh, gorgeous they gave themselves trillions of dollars of interest-free money right so they took all that money the banks and they bought real estate so you saw they put funds together to bought real estate so gigantic real estate bubble right just because me and you didn't have access to that money it doesn't mean the bubble doesn't exist the bubble exists but it's on a centralized level now Okay, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Okay. They put in loopholes that the centralized power can work around all the rules and regulations they put in for me and you. Okay. When you've been an employee your entire life, though, like most people have, and you don't want to bank money because you, uh, why would you? I take a lot of guts to invest riskly. Yeah. Like when you're 
near retirement and your pension will lower your income yeah and that's the, the tax scam right you put your money in a pension and I'm just gonna wait until the truck goes by lots of construction still here crazy there's actually some places that in Vancouver just to let you know where the bubble is in Vancouver right there are construction companies that are now uh, stopping their construction of multi-tower units because the prices have come down and they won't be able to reap you know get as much profits out of it right so things are shifting a little bit uh, what was I talking about? oh yeah taxes so people to put their money into pension funds right so they can retire they can live on that money so that was well not for the most part because the you can get tax write-offs for that and then when you pull out your money in retirement it, when you're getting an old age fund coming in from the government or whatnot when you pull that money that's considered to be income and you get taxed on it so people are trying to manage their tax burden by living either frugally or moving their money from here to here it, it's just crazy right people aren't free human beings in the western world they're burdened by uh, carrying uh, the profits of corporations you're in van i'm in van victoria both cities but yeah west coast canada man speaking of pensions we, what do you think is the outlook for retirement funds for people in their 20s and 30s for when they retire in however many years uh, there will be no pensions not even for me forget about your 20s and 30s there will be no pensions from governments for people my age either right middle age by the time middle age people get to retirement man good luck trying to live on any pensions you get from the government you, you, that's not gonna happen people are in retirement are having a hard time living on pensions right now right hello Chicho and chat Randall how are you doing your audience might be new to this but I think it's time to raise the issue of life uh, extension uh, the solution is ready to go today billions have died as a result of inaction and countless billions will die if we fail to act now the question we must ask ourselves is what is what are we prepared to do for more life my solution in inhibit head structures in the cloned embryo and grow to size using an excised uterus we will then have access to identical organ systems and limbs how about a five-year-old heart uh, I as I disagree with that because let's say you put a five-year-old heart in a body of a 70 year old body right that five-year-old heart is gonna pump like mad now are the arteries of that 70 year old body would they be able to handle that pressure no obviously not right so I don't think that is a viable solution personally for all of humanity and there's moral issues with that uh, because we are not just our brains as human beings we are our complete central nervous system right we are all of our organs we are our experiences right so I don't think that's viable it might be uh, I don't want to get into moralistic aspect of it I don't first of all I don't trust corporations to do this centralized institutions to do this for especially not pharmaceutical companies right so I don't think that's a uh, viable for me anyway and cost wise it would be ridiculous and resource wise it would con consume crazy you want longevity eat healthy eat less uh, consume less poisons make sure you're not getting antibiotics and toxins in your food supply educate yourself live a healthy life exercise reduce your stress that's that's the that's longevity okay the biggest change they made to the financial system 
is they require the banks issuing the loan to have a 5% stake in the assets that are bundled uh, uh, from those loans. Uh, one, this change has not stopped the formation of these bubbles. Two, banks are chipping away at these rule changes by getting exceptions even, even more or so. Uh, more so now under Trump. Yeah, nothing's changed. Truman, I agree with Truman. <laughs> One day I'll go into that house and see what it is that they're doing, <laughs> building a roller coaster. The same structural risk that shattered several investment banks as a result of the subprime crisis simply does not exist to the same extent. Um, what's that bank in uh, in Germany? Deutsche Bank. Uh, I would disagree with you regarding Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is... <laughs> Why is Deutsche Bank still around? Because they, it's too big to fail. The whole concept of too big to fail still exists. That was the main problem with the 2008 financial collapse, right? They were too big to fail. Why were they too big to fail? Because they were giving free money to buy assets across the economy right everything was centralized that still exists what's your take on ubi ubi i got either a solution to growing automation and, and pensions or a way to oh universal basic income or a way to uh subside the wealth gap to keep the status quo uh it's it's not a solution Universal basic income is not a solution while uh, we have monopoly centralized corporations and entities controlling our economy and our politics. Universal basic income may be a stopgap measure temporarily to chill, to basically acting as a floodgate to remove uh, tension in society. But in the limit, universal basic income is a form of enslavement that may be true i'm not an expert however it's undeniable that we still have huge securities bubbles that will probably burst maybe disaster will not happen to the same extent as 2008 though i cannot say i think uh, once the, the bubble bursts, it's going to be one order of magnitude 10 times worse than worse than the 2008 um, scam that happened okay uh, i don't think it's going to be less that's for sure and the derivative market is huge it's huge it's huge right no i'm uh, good on extended life i'm fine with turning back into stardust when it's my time yeah amen i agree with that zari i think universal basic income derived from revenue of automated jobs is reasonable yes how is that going to be managed right uh so is amazon once they go full automation in all their warehouses are they going to give money uh to the government to pay out people in their universal basic income fund is that what they're going to do or is amazon going to play the tax system and sh say that they've made no profits right over the last whatever 20 years right as amazon how many years has amazon shown profits and paid taxes on those profits right two of those years three of those years i know for the first 10 they didn't show any profit whatsoever i think that's when i was following them right playing them right uh, so these centralized institutions will always be able to play the tax system because they control government right universal basic income is not the solution to everything uh, the solution for viable society is the decentralization of our economic political systems. Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers were not too big to fail. They no longer exist. Um, they, they were dangled, okay, as, oh, they failed. They were the sacrificial lambs, right? Why weren't the other ones allowed to fail, right? Why were they given why why were why did the US government take on four trillions of dollars of debt when they bought Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae they took on the 
garbage debt that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae had put on, right? Houses that they had said were worth a million dollars that were worth $200,000. If you take on $400, $4 trillion worth of debt, right? That really is intrinsic value is let's say at best one trillion not even one trillion right and then extrapolate that as derivatives right so they took took on four trillion dollars of garbage debt right and what that did they gave they propped up the other few trillion dollars of debt that was out there that was also garbage but it was less garbage than the four trillion that they took on right so they pump up pumped up the debt bubble they pumped up the asset bubbles right i can rephrase things have changed since 2000, 2008 the bubble is much much bigger much much bigger it's enormous enormous too big to bail fail basically means we've bought all the politicians uh so we can't fail yeah what monopolies control our government exactly this should be rich <laughs> pharmaceutical monopolies right that's that's one like how how come how come the government has agreed in the u.s anyway to pay uh absorbent amounts to these pharma school industries the education system is monopolized okay the post-secondary education system is monopolized in a big way the god do an example the, the one of the things that happened after the 2008 financial collapse the housing bubble right trillions of dollars were given to the banks and they formed funds where they went out with those monies right and they bought houses we're not talking dozens hundreds of houses they bought thousands upon thousands of houses so they centralized the real estate market right those are monopolies the comic book industry is a monopoly the distribution of it diamond distributors controls the distribution of all comic books to every single uh, comic book store in Canada and United States that's a monopoly it's huge monopolies are everywhere okay no it's a problem of centralized banking uh, and regulation too you can't start a new bank nowadays can you? yeah and money is monopolized right take a look at uh, PayPal take a look at uh, patreon take a look at uh, 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 start uh, you um, the payment systems right I mean if you want the the, the whole thing with the uh, uh, anyway the the, the the money the banking system is monopolized it's crazy monopolies everywhere I'm pretty sure you know that uh, uh, pock, pocket rocket pocket rocket 98 hey Chicho hope you're okay good to join the stream good to join good to have you King Tom how are you doing whoa just made the garden stream hey y'all Ting, how's it going hey what's up Dante how's life are you happy for me to do life extension uh, privately uh, sure I as everyone's free to do whatever they want right as long as you're not hurting other uh, other people right if if you want to do life extension privately do it if you're comfortable with it do it uh, but if that starts interfering with my life then we have issues right uh, predicting a correction is easy but predicting when is the tricky uh, predicting when is the tricky part exactly when are you when are you saying that a correction will occur who knows right right a correction will occur when will it occur who knows uh, in my life I've made certain bets of certain corrections happening and I've been pretty good with them right some of them I was off right there's been times where I've picked the bottom and wrote it up there's times where I missed the bottom and missed the ride up 
my track record is not bad. For example, uh, Gauss, uh, Gusses, I wrote about the 2008, finally when the bubble burst, 2008 collapse. I was writing about it, blogging about it. You can find it on archive.org, right? If you do Chicho, you'll find it, right? I started in 2005, 2006 saying, be careful, the shit is about to hit the fan, right? Some people that were following my work after everything went belly up said, Chicho, thank you very much. You saved us, right? I was talking about cryptocurrencies when we were trading uh, below 30, <laughs> right? <laughs> A Bitcoin below $30, right? I got into it in 2010. When it hit 12, 1200, I said, hey, it's going to burst. People were like, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. And it burst. It came down to 200. When it was around 200, I said, hey, it's a pretty good time to buy it, Two, 250. Right? People, oh, it burst. It was, uh, went up to 19,000. I said, oh, I'd be selling. I wouldn't be buying. You know, my, mar my thing is 2,600 for Bitcoin. People, oh, you're crazy. It'll never go down that much. It went up to 3,000. 3100 people asked me it was a good time to buy mm, not a bad time right and i would i said i'd be selling like a few weeks ago i would be selling i would have sold if i bought a three thousand and like seven thousand i mentioned that before right most of it i would have rolled it a little bit up it's easy to if you're if you're following a certain market you can follow you can get a feel for the cycles the problem where people get caught up in bubbles when they lose their life savings, where they get burnt, is when they jump into a market without understanding that market and following that market for an extended period of time, which is one of the things that I say, that I've said, is pretty important to do, right? Practice, okay? Learn about what you wanna invest in, and that, will allow you to understand the market you want to invest in okay so there's no way when you see prices rising with something go in there with your life savings and put your money in there that's a foolish thing to do especially if you don't know anything about that market okay why are you even uh, da, 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 da. where are we oh i lost da, 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 da. Where? Choo, 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 choo. Oh, I lost some eight messages. We leave. Oh, thank you for taking care of business. Uh, Maz predicting the correction. Oh, here we go. Chicho, what do you think about genetic engineering? Uh, do you think we could exploit the scientific field to extend or improve our lives? Uh, we could, right? However, genetic engineering is in the hands of these corporate monopolies these gigantic firms that really don't give a rat's up rat's ass about the betterment of humanity all they care about is their profits so generic engineering could show positive uh, could have a positive benefit to our society but I don't think it will for the short term or for the medium term I think uh, it's too centralized yeah. and the problem with genetic engineering is uh, it's taking diversity out of the environment. And once an environment, a system is not diverse, then when it is put under pressure, right, uh, it may completely collapse. The best systems in nature are complex systems because they can change, they can adapt easily. Once you genetically modify any system where it is uh, homogenous, then when it's put under pressure, if it collapses, it's done for, right? It might not recuperate. If a system is complex, then it can adjust easily to forces acting on it and it can get stronger. That is the best way to deal with it, right? So I totally disagree with GMO foods, GMO crops. I think they're horrendous, okay? And I'm not alone. There are countries out there that have banned 
GMO products, GMO foods, right? So, because it's an open experiment, uh, pharmaceutical companies are conducting with the well-being of the environment, to the health of humanity, and the health of every living species on this planet. Right? I think it's ridiculous what's going on. Okay. The sci science aspect of it, I agree with. The implementation, I'm totally against. I reckon it should be regulated carefully to not give the ultra rich an unfair advantage. You hear of billionaires at the moment going through five hearts and ton of uh, joint, re ton of joint replacements to keep them propped up whilst the poor die young. It'll only get worse if left alone. Tink, I agree with you 100%. There's one of the hockey owner franchises in Canada that recently needed a liver transplant or something like this, right? So we put it out there privately, I'll pay, you know, I'm looking for this. And some foolish human being, right, in Canada gave him one of his livers or something. And the guy's like 90 years old, the guy drinks, smoke, whatever it is, right? So who knows how much money was transferred, right? Uh, the guy said, oh, I did it out of goodness of my heart because I like hockey and stuff like this. The guy's a fool if he did it for that. Okay, that's my personal opinion. Why not give his liver to someone, some kid that needed it? Why give it to a multi-billionaire that owns a hockey franchise? He's free to do what he wants, but I am also free, free to call them a fool. Okay. Petty, really. Masses end for what a want of money. I realize you said genetic engineering, not medicine uh, in general, but same concept. Yeah. Almost all of those fields should be re-regulated. It promotes competition and the prices would go down. Look at the LASIK eye surgery and his example. Yeah, much lower cost now than it was years ago, but the technology keeps getting better. Yeah, the curious guy. Loving in the outdoor stream, by the way, Chicho. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Truman. Doing well. Thank you very much. Dante, thank you for taking care of business. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of business. And I hope the sound of sawing and all the noises is not too much for you guys. I kicked down the gain. I brought the mic really close to me. So hopefully it's okay. Okay. Is the lag on my end only? Great topics. Keep up the flow. Awesome. Nikki, how you doing? Tink, agreed. There's definitely a potential for a dystopian future hidden on the premise of genetic engineering. Yeah. And that's exactly where we are right now, to tell you the truth, right? What do you think the effects of AI and machine learning will be on market trends? Huge, huge. I would say machine learning, AI is not there yet, not even close, right? So it's automation and machine learning. And the effects, huge. We're already seeing it being rolled out right now, okay? On a very, very benign level, right? Oh, there's automatic cash registers. In warehouses, you have automated sorting systems, right? A lot of that stuff is being rolled out slowly. Once it goes into full production, right, we're going to see massive job, cut, job cuts. We're going to see massive amounts of inequality, more so than we do right now, more so than we do right now. Have you seen the film Gattaca? Yeah, great film. I loved it. It's basically uh, theorizing what we just discussed. Exactly. And Gattaca is a fantastic movie. It really flew on the radar for many people. Uh, great show. Great show. Yes. And I believe it. Uh, and the other one was, uh, there's another one. Uh, actually, Gattaca wasn't that bad. It did get a fair bit of uh, good publicity. There was another one that came out. It was on the same level as Gattaca. I can't remember the name. What was it? Um, that was on the same level uh it was the they did martial arts with guns they fought each other and it was a guy uh christian bale was in it i believe uh, yes and i believe it would be a good prediction of what would happen to our societies if genetic engineering was freely uh exploited and that is exactly what's going to happen right because that is exactly what is happening right now i caught up with the chat cool plumb my plum jam. Mm. 
No, it wasn't the island. It was... Um, the island was very good. The island is actually what... Equilibrium, yes. Perps, equilibrium. Equilibrium was really good. Ah, yes, the island is what you're talking about, the clones, right? But what you're talking about is without the brains. It was Equilibrium. Good call-outs, Perps. Yeah, Equilibrium. That was a great show. Very underrated. It didn't hit any, very few people's radar. It's ironic. You think people 100 years ago being told that all jobs will be automated thought that it may be a utopian society yeah they didn't they didn't expect uh, uh, it wouldn't be uh, uh, the government that maybe people were still under the impression that the government cared about them right do you think tools could be developed to act accurately predict something like stock price trends yes and they're in existence right now okay if anybody can know where price is going then what it's something i think about pretty often i'm super interested in the field uh twitching jason check out um uh the personal finance or economics playlist that we created where i was um the video where i was I was graphing stuff on a semi log graph where we're looking at different places that you could have invested in um, over a hundred year period right uh, and looked at the CPI and stuff uh, I think it's in personal finance if it's not in personal finance it'd be in the economics politics and it's for sure in the ASMR mathematics playlist right so it's basically uh, talking about where you could have invested in now what you're talking about the person that I mentioned uh, Martin Armstrong was one of the first people that implemented one of the algorithms f to do stock trading to do predictions right and in 1994 a fund opened up where a bunch of mathematicians got together and created this fund where you could have invested at the time to put your money in okay after I think three or four years they closed the fund to outside money only employees could invest money in that fund in a 10-year period okay someone mentioned that you know investing in real estate you know you can get three percent return per year right three percent is basically inflation you're breaking even it lowest inflation you're breaking even right this fund that was put together that came on the market in 1994 okay over a 10-year period on average every year its rate of return was 71 percent let's say 70 percent uh, you know within that range plus or minus five percent right i think i think it was over 70 percent or 78 percent 70 percent return per year for a 10-year period that's huge and there were a bunch of mathematicians and all they did they wrote the algorithms they look at the mathematics and they put their money based on predictions right what you're talking about twitching jason is already in effect okay it's already been it's already it's already been rolled out like 25 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago okay it's only available to a handful of people yeah 70 percent 70 plus percent i think it was like 78 percent per year or something huge if you had we looked at the numbers if you had invested like a hundred dollars in 1994 in 2004 you would have pulled out like a million plus year, dollars or something i forget what the numbers were right 78 percent per year over a 10-year period <laughs> and they say a good rate of return is five percent <laughs> hilarious how much longer will this stream go for chicho uh about another 45 minutes hannah that's so true yeah i have a question how do you f uh tell the difference between oppression and fair rule um, realize there's a parallel between what the UK's thought thoughts towards the EU mimic um, Ireland's thoughts towards the UK, UK. though everyone for one uh, everyone's for one and against the other obviously the EU has been um, no way near as harsh but the lines have been a little bl uh, blurred between the two i think the way i look at it is i look at the power that a centralized institution has right if a centralized institution has the right to tell people 
thousands of miles away what they can eat how they can trade how they can live how they can communicate that's gone too far because that centralized institution does not live where it's passing laws okay that goes across the board in Canada United States with the federal governments right they're passing laws people are sitting in Ottawa offices you got wasps around here <laughs> people are sitting in Ottawa or Washington DC that have never been to certain regions in Canada or United States and passing laws for those regions why because a corporation wants to exploit the resources in that region that's too much power okay uh, I, I'm not sure if I answered your question properly but, um, if I didn't let me know uh, and I'll try again uh, yes I think I've seen it uh, I'll look for it later today I just can't imagine with all the data we have over the course of decades what we could do with it so we could do exactly that make predictions which is one of the things that is being done right now analytics is huge right what would the decentralization of that kind of power do to the markets I wonder crash them and then it would build up local economies major right so what it would do is take power away, power away from centralized institutions and it would empower local communities and local regions right during the transition we would see some turmoil a lot of people are afraid of that turmoil maybe because they're in retirement age they don't have long enough to live to be able to deal with that turmoil maybe they don't know what that turmoil is gonna uh, mean or how they can take advantage of that turmoil to build up their assets make themselves more financially secure and stable lack of education <laughs> a wasp going into my ear I don't know if you guys saw it or buzzing uh, I appreciate the discussion by the way I don't expect any uh, definitive answers I believe this is an ongoing conversation but for sure twitching Jason and please take anything I say with a grain of salt I'm sort of set in my ways to a certain degree because I've played with the markets and I know what the markets are like <laughs> what? I know what the markets are like and how s how governments empower centralized institutions and uh, uh, impoverish individuals right I know the type of rules in place right now that bypass some of them bypass some of the rules that are put in place to prevent individuals from becoming financially independent while they allow corporations to acquire more assets so there's a lot of stuff in play right but take everything I say with a grain of salt please would you have vo uh, voted leave in the UK Brexit referendum 100% 100% I supported remain at the time but the more I studied it the more leave I swung to the point I voted leave in a second referendum if it occurs yeah Morris I would have voted leave like leave yes <laughs> get out get out get out piss off you Brussels you you banking institutions all right because they're not for the betterment of my neighbors and my community right for the well-being of me they're there to pay off those who are only interested in money to do the bidding of the corporations right there are some good things associated with the with the EU free freedom of movement where you know if you if you're born in an EU country I guess if you're, let's say you're a citizen of an EU country then you're allowed to work you know in another EU country sure freedom of movement is okay but that's also created problems where certain EU countries are impoverished so people moving move from there to the better off EU countries and work for lower wages and in not as good conditions and then send the money back to the, 
But what about the people that are living here, right? They're getting screwed over. Okay. What are they supposed to do? Right? Regarding oppression, I think um, then that large institutions need to rethink the way they implement uh, their rule then. I think they should look to educate the given countries and let them make the choices rather than tell them to obey 100 percent even if this uh, this decision is for um for the better uh, is for the better of the wor world for the betterment of the world for example climate change regulations yeah tink yeah i disagree with dictatorial totalitarian rules period that only gives power to centralized institutions we know this not only based on history not only based on what we're seeing right now but based on every uh, every science fiction uh, story right that has decided to tackle the this concept when they take it to the limit it's all dystopian societies they're all dystopian there's very few science fiction uh, thoughts out there where they take this centralization of power to the limit where it's for the betterment of humanity or the betterment of the environment or the betterment of this planet right it's all bad just telling people they need to accept the change for the worse is a load of crap yeah give it give them the argument and shame them if they choose greedily but don't command them good discussion yeah and be willing and don't censor the the discourse the dialogue right because as soon as you censor people you shut them off right then there is no debate you can't really discuss the data to come up with a solution because no matter what thoughts they have that might be foolish in your opinion they do have valid concerns that is the reason why they're thinking that way as soon as you shut them off you shut yourself to possibly coming up with solutions that the system uh, uh, that the system needs right so the censorship as soon as one of the things i think it was think that asked, asked or someone else one way you know that centralized power is abusing their power you've gone down the dystopian road is when they kill discourse when they censor thought right which is where we are right now as soon as a certain segment of society is not allowed to participate in this discussion right then you know you're down a dark road period okay borderless mass of unskilled labor results in lower wages for domestic working class and also allows for a brain drain for less developed economies i support remain out of the lack of a coherent plan for leaving but germany france etc are in decline economically so what is the benefit to staying yeah morris i i agree with you the western powers are on the downtrend and right now they're doing all they can to keep control right maybe committing economic terrorism economic warfare straight up proxy warfare or whatever it might be right we already teach kids to not have their own thoughts we brainwash them with stupid tv programs that tells the kids how to interact with others the less uh, other the less own thoughts they have the easier it is to control them yeah that's why i agree i think one of the main places that we have to decentralize monopoly power is education the one of the first places we have to tackle it's you know there's there's uh, monetary money that we have to decentralize food we have to decentralize health we have to decentralize and education we have to decentralize once we decentralize education we're going to see a tremendous amount 
tremendous number of solutions popping up for a lot of the ills in our societies really is one of the problems with our societies in the western world right now and other parts of the world is the centralization of education okay because it's dict dictatorial you're not allowing people to think about solutions you're telling them what the solutions are which aren't really solutions chicho do you think plants grow faster with more co2 ah yes i know where you're going with this uh plants need co2 yes right plants need co2 only germany is in decline oh france is in decline and not even really uh, germany is on a downtrend germany is on a downtrend there's no doubt about that don't you i got some cinnamon bun here <laughs> squishy cinnamon bun The earlier you start, the better. Can you imagine if you, if we were able to rewatch these types of discussions that were held 50, 100 years ago? What a time we live in. Yeah. That's one of the things that's, uh, that I find exciting to look back on these things and uh, see how well they hold up. I know some of the stuff that I wrote in the past has held up really well. Some of the stuff I wrote didn't hold up well, right? So everyone is right and wrong. Their growth has just slowed. Uh, Dante, once you go slow growth, slower growth, when other parts of the world are growing, like if Germany is growing, I don't know what it's growing right now. Let's say they're growing 5% per year, right? Not even 3%, whatever it is, 5% per year. If in other parts of the world are growing at 10% per year, based on exponential growth, you're in decline. Because it's not about the absolute growth. It's about differential accumulation, what we talked about before, right? It's not, it doesn't matter if you're growing. If you're growing below the averages, you're in decline. In the limit, you're done. Italy is the only EU country that has a negative economic growth in one of the quarters. Mm, didn't Spain have as well? And these numbers that they're putting out, these centralized institutions, man, I wouldn't trust them one bit. Your information is incorrect. Negative growth is not the only thing that matters. Uh, Jilly, Jilly Albania. Okay. What is important is the averages. It's about differential accumulation. L do do a search for Chicho and differential accumulation. We put out like three videos on it, right? Watch the most recent one and it sort of goes through the summary of the rest. If this is the averages growth, let's say this is inflation, right? So best example we can do is inflation, right? Assume this is inflation. You have to be getting a higher return than inflation because if you're not getting a higher return than inflation, then you're losing right because if you're here then inflation grows like this you grow faster if you're below inflation inflation grows like this you're done for right that's why everybody's chasing growth because there it's induced inflation right so it's not enough just to be growing at one percent or two percent what's the averages that's what you have to look at okay sup Jilly? Just playing some data uh, underlords and listening. I love the streamer. Uh, thanks for showing it to me. Ah, so Jilly, you're new here. Welcome. <laughs> I hope you're okay with a little disagreement. Here in EU, as an EU citizen, you have the right to search medical help in other countries for free, as long as it's considered standard medical help. Otherwise, you still have to pay. Cool. That's really good. That's one of the benefits, right? But this is something nobody tells the people who need the medical help. Well, that's unfortunate. How can you socialize children? 
uh, without teaching them uh, relative cultural norms. Everything on earth is con conditioned to a certain extent because it's hard for them to socialize in school right. Why would we need stupid TV programs? Who does it, who does it for us? Well, centralized institutions, not true. The EU has growth slowing across the board. I thought you meant negative growth. Uh, no, not negative growth. It, that, because the growth numbers can be fixed, right? So you can't look at any country in a bubble as an absolute. Everything is relative, right? You have to can look at stuff relative to the global economy, right? Like US dollar is a fiat currency that has flooded the markets, right? However, relative to certain other currencies, it's a good place to be. All right? Relative to other things, it might not be a good place to be. So it's all relative. Mario Draghi even speculated they're on the cusp of an economic shock. Yeah, well, then Europe has been in decline for a century. Mm, relative to what, Dante? Because they've been growing. Um, they were growing much faster. I mean, World War II, after World War II, it kicked them into a major boom period where they had to rebuild everything. All right. Last question. What's your thoughts on Boris Johnson? <laughs> He's come out promising more investment in just about every sector, but lower taxes for the rich. Seems complete madness, but maybe he can shake uh, some good things out of the parliament. No, I, that, Boris, Boris Johnson is a schmuck. He's a joke. He, he doesn't control anything. He doesn't. He, he, he's just a puppet. He's, who's just pulling his strings? Boris Johnson. I wouldn't even invite him to my house. I wouldn't even have a drink with him. I wouldn't even share. Well, I, I would share bread with anyone really, but uh, I would feed anyone really. But Boris Johnson, I'd be inclined not to feed. Okay. No, I don't think Johnson knows what what it is he's talking about. He's just a he's just a mouthpiece. He's garbage. That makes the definition pretty meaningless. Da, 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 da. Which one? Yeah, Europe uh, decline. Dante, in what way? Growth? For example, let's take all the countries in the world, right? Let's assume every country in the world was growing at 10% and your country was growing at 3%. You're in deep poop. It's just, a, it's just exponential growth. It's just the way it works. By decline, I meant losing pace. Yeah. As I said, it's by decline. For me, when I say decline, I mean this. They went from 5% down to 4%, down to 3%, down to... That's a downward. For me, I just think of it mathematically. That's a slope that's going down. It's still growth relative to zero, but it's a slope going down, right? As I said, that's been happening for a century. I don't know, Dante. I would have to look at the numbers. Um, I would have to look at the numbers. You mentioned earlier how you used to give your take on good times to buy and sell Bitcoin. To my understanding, you no longer trade it though. Well, why is that? Uh, because I'm not into doing trading. I'm not into just spending my time, my resources, my energy on making more money. Okay, uh, I've reached a point in my life where uh, my life is not about money. I'm, I, I don't live extravagantly. Uh, I'm not. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy Lamborghinis and stuff like this. I did my partying phases hardcore for a while, where I was made good money and I blew good money, right? Uh, so I'm not. I rather put my time my energy my money into this right and doing this takes time energy and money really okay so thank you for anyone who's subbing following supporting patreon donating uh, all of that right but I rather do that do all of that doing this because that allows me to sleep well at night and for me, that's also a place where I'm investing, right? Because I think me doing this 
in the limit is the best thing for our society. And if it's the best thing for our society, then it's the best thing for me. Okay. Because in the future, I'll have, hopefully, communities that we can rely on. Good food supplies. Right? Hopefully, the sound of the people sighing is not too much. It's crazy. The amount of construction, like, it's insane what people have been doing. They're spending tens of thousands of dollars to renovate their homes, which are perfectly fine perfectly fine so they can kick up the value on it so they can get more debt on the house so they can do more things with that money while and those things does not mean paying off that it means going into more debt and then what happens when the value of the house comes down a little bit people are I wish they understood more about cycles Italy is a wealthy country but all the wealth is in the companies from other countries in the ma in the mafia and other rich Italians Italy is a typical example of country that just takes and takes money and never invests back in country yeah many countries are like that relative to the US first then China mm, relative to China is growing like mad certain parts of Asia are growing like mad so Africa is growing like mad, right? That's one of the reasons uh, Western worlds have so much interest and China has so much interest and so much geopolitical games and war being played out in Africa. Like Nigeria, it's estimated the population is going to triple in the next 100 years. That is growth beyond belief, right? exactly my point is that Italy is not a poor country just because it have low increase in money the problem is all the money is either leaving the country or it's ending up in the pockets of others so when you do these calculations then it will show a decline in money yeah the post-war boom was still dwarfed by US growth the US growth was a war growth right US stepped onto the economic landscape after World War Two, after World War One, really, right? Are you saying global warming is good for plants? <laughs> yes. <laughs> imagine, uh, uh, imagine believe that politicians are still in control and have the power in 2018. Yeah, they don't. Like really, nobody in Canada really believes that uh, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau calls the shots. Who believes that? No one really believes that. It's the corporations. It more corporate and the conservatives sheer that mouthpiece for the corporations and for the born again Christian fanatical evangelical lunatics, right? No offense to anyone who has religious beliefs, but when your religious beliefs say that majority of humanity is gonna burn in hell. Uh, then you need to reevaluate your beliefs, right? When you start passing dictatorial laws to take freedoms away from people to force a certain ideology down their throat, you're a dictator, right? The U.S. overlooked Europe in the early 20th century. Asia followed in the past couple of decades, and soon Africa will follow as well. Yeah overtook us overtook europe in the early 20th century yeah europe is e europe is stagnation to a certain degree right again that's a long-term trend yeah i agree with you dante on that level for sure but not very useful in analyzing year-to-year -year growth no year-to-year -year growth is uh is different than on a decade well on a decade level you can uh, extrapolate decade because the year to year is a high frequency stuff in the more broader trend right in the more broader trend for sure europe is in a decline right? that's one of the reasons they open up the floodgates and european countries are allowing mass migration to their countries right because they needed the population boom they needed that growth to keep up with the rest of the globe 
in my republic we have a growth rate of about three to four percent but it's far from enough in terms of value yeah construction noise construction noise i hope it's not too much for you guys gang uh, my apology if it is i might try to when we do things outside uh, i might try and do it early in the morning and maybe during holidays and uh, later in the evening when you know they can't well the construction goes late so the noise by loss you should buy the house next door so you can shut the mom <laughs> i wouldn't pay i wouldn't pay whatever it is they're asking right makes sense ray dalio says we need meaningful relationships and meaningful work yeah i don't know ray dalio well someone said we need more financial growth which is pretty much debt. yeah it's a debt-based economy which is in the long run it centralizes power so keep renovating houses and buying houses imagine a politician saying we don't need coca-cola or mcdonald's in our country imagine imagine what would happen i think they get taken out does we know coca-cola has death squads right they've been they've had death squads operating in colombia for a number of decades right probably in all of S south and central america blump so tart so tart so good so good we got, we got construction going on here i was hoping they would take a break during lunch hour but they're not taking a break we got construction over there the good thing is we don't have the people with the doing yard work with their electric you know gas powered cutters and blow blowers and stuff in some areas in south america where coca-cola gets all their water from it's cheaper to buy coca-cola than water yeah and they pump out the water so they go into a region here's the region here's a factory coca-cola in the middle right they dig their pump out start pumping out water hardcore the water table sinks down all the farmers all the neighborhoods and stuff like this the towns that had wells that were originally in the water table when the water table drops their wells go dry guess what they're out of water uh oh coca-cola death squads first time i'm hearing of it blah, blah. what's that about do a do a do a search on duck duck go there are deaths coca-cola has been What do you call it? Uh, the, I don't know if they've been convicted. I think they have been convicted, taken to court, and it's been proven that they hired death squads to kill people to blah, blah, blah. Just do Coca-Cola death squads. Uh, they've been in operation for a long time. The locals have been living in... In some areas, the locals who have been living of the water hole when cc buys the water hole the locals are not allowed near it yeah for raid the adalio meaningful work means emotionally abusing employees at his investment firm through radical transparency there was a good article about him in current affairs oh really i don't know him you live in a rich neighborhood i live you know what uh, all of canada is rich well, not all of Canada, but West Coast of Canada is extremely rich relative to huge parts of the world. But it doesn't mean everybody is rich here, right? A huge chunk of the population here lives with debt. Like, I don't own a house. I don't own a property. So I'm a renter, right? So those people, a lot of those people who own houses, some of them, the senior citizens, because the property values have gone up so much, that means the taxes on those properties have gone up so there's been a lot of senior citizens that have been forced to sell their homes they've been in for like 40 years 
because the taxes have been too high because their pensions don't cover the taxes right is it rich it's a great place for multi-billionaires to launder their money that's what Canada is known for it has been a great place for corporations and multi-billionaires multi-millionaires who have acquired their wealth from other countries to come here and launder their money that's what the centralized government in Canada has allowed to the detriment of the citizens of Canada right so there's a tremendous number of Canadians that are living in poverty okay tremendous number okay there's tons of homeless in my area ridiculous amount of homeless the drug abuse rate is insane right like we we had someone go into our car break and not break in but go into our car and take change and steal stuff from the car we see homeless people walking around the neighborhood <laughs> like how is that you know what is rich i don't know what rich is is that tea or beer chicho? it's tea it's tea my tea I'm not a beer drinker I have had my periods where I was a beer drinker but I'm not I don't drink beer anymore is that how you're dealing with the noise <laughs> no <laughs> usually during when construction the house by the way that we're living in you close the windows the noise it's got great uh, sound insulation so you don't hear the construction going on Ray Dalio is the founder of Bridgewater Associates wow. the most successful hedge fund in the world yikes will do yeah I'll look it up that's fascinating Dalio, Dalio uh, does seem like he has good things to say sometimes to his credit does he are you on pension no <laughs> no no pension no pension I I live frugally man I live as frugally as possible as I can uh, I've gone through cycles I've gone through cycles right and right now I'm in this state and I have been in this state for a very long time maybe I'll go into a different state I guess I don't know right but I manage my finances I don't if I can't afford something or if I'm on a major budget and low on funds, I do without for a long period of time until I can do with, and I do with, right? The, the main things that I, that I need uh, for what I do, I need to eat healthy. I need high-speed internet to be able to do this. I need to acquire certain types of equipment to be able to do this, right? I need to be able to afford to be able to travel and stuff like this. And I need money to buy comic books and books I like buying books and reading books and stuff like that that is what it is for me I guess I don't uh, all of the stuff that we're talking about with the markets and whatnot all of the stuff I participated in a long time ago and I've followed a lot of geopolitics and pol political news economic news and I follow a lot of trends right there's certain stocks that I follow just to see what they're doing and the news that they release right like someone asked earlier what what sites do I use to get my economic news you know zero hedge uh, 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 Armstrong Martin Armstrong real news net uh, different things right different news sites but I also follow specific companies right I follow their stocks I follow their um, quarterly reports or yearly reports right sometimes I listen in to their yearly broadcasts right because that gives me an idea of what what's going on what their plans are because all of that stuff once you're they're on the public markets they have to share that information right sometimes they manipulate the numbers a lot of times they manipulate the spreadsheets or numbers and they don't report the stuff but the analysts go through that stuff and they say hey they're hiding this they're doing this or they're doing phenomenal right so I also follow uh, certain stocks even though I'm not investing in those stocks right so I see what they're doing and see you know I sometimes I do the 
50-day, 200-day moving average. I look at the uh, stoic whatever. I look at the bands. I look at uh, the different metrics of their stocks just to see what the trends are, the volume of the trades and stuff, right? I like it. I like data. The good don't prosper. The good don't prosper? The good, the, the, what, what is prosper, I ask? The good don't prosper. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm wealthy. Not in terms of fiat currency, not in terms of precious metals, right? I'm healthy. I have, I'm, and wealthy, right? I'm fairly healthy. I got amazing, amazing uh, friends that I have kept over the years and I've developed and I've put my time and energy with them. I have a great family structure. I have, I have amazing people that I interact with, right? I've acquired a lot of knowledge, right? I know how the world works. So all of that stuff to me is prosperous. I know people who are millionaires, who are miserable, who are stressed beyond belief. They have health issues. Their relationships suck, right? They try to do everything and anything with their money to fill a void that they have in their, in their souls, right? That, to me, prosperity is waking up in the morning and being happy that you're there right waking up in the morning and having things that you would love to do that allow you to create to share right to make the world better right for me prosperity is knowing how to cook and go into the kitchen and spending five hours to make plum jam right that you can eat during a live stream that to me is prosperity i know people who are extremely well off that don't cook they don't know how to cook how could you not have a relationship with food if you don't have a relationship with food you're not prosperous because if anything goes wrong you can't feed yourself right if you're not healthy you can't go for a two-hour walk right absolutely happiness is the metric Happiness is the metric to measure. Yes, right? And sometimes, uh, disclaimer, sometimes you will be sad. Sometimes life deals you a bad card. You have to deal with it, right? But having the knowledge, the, the emotional stability, and the mental understanding of what is happening to be able to deal with life's burdens, that is prosperity. Plum jam on a live stream is the key to life. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Fun gang. Nice live stream. Nice live stream. Enjoying it very much. Great conversation. And we actually pretty much stayed on topic uh, for this live stream, which is basically personal finance and economics and whatnot, right? So that's great. That's great. Um, I haven't set up any more live streams. Happiness on a macro scale, then, haha, -ha, yeah. My micro scale as well, right? But work towards a macro scale. Make it share. Share your happiness, right? Share that prosperity with others so they have a feeling of what it means to be prosperous to a certain degree. We're almost at two hours, gang. And the sun is coming up. Over here, I'm all sun. <laughs> fun. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably call this a stream. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for the corrections. Thank you for the information. Uh, Ayaz, thank you for poking the hornet's nest. It's important to ask these questions. It really is right um i will set up more live streams maybe later on this week uh, but i'm going to be busy later on towards the end, early next week for a few days so we might if i can't put on a live stream actually we might not even do a live stream we might not do a live stream until mid next week late next week we'll see uh, i'll try to get one in but who knows okay um but uh, they, I will announce them sooner rather than later, I hope. And I will try to shoot some videos to 
uh, edit and have them up uh, on BitChute and YouTube. And I'm going to start loading on the live streams on BitChute and YouTube, the last three that we did starting tomorrow, uh, lagging them a couple of days at a time. Okay. If happiness is the, is the metric to measure and money makes you happy, is that okay? Is that individual wrong and their value skewed? Uh, no, but money is not going to see them through life. Okay. John, John Mayonnaise, I know people who are very happy to be rich. However, money is not the only thing that you have to deal in life. You have to deal with uh, other things that life throws your way. And there are things that life throws your way that money doesn't have an answer for. Money can't buy. There are things, contrary to what people might think, there are things that money cannot buy. Your health is one of them. It might get you out of a trouble, but if you have serious certain health issues because of your lifestyle, maybe you've been drinking too much, doing too much drugs, uh, eating unhealthy and whatnot, then it was money that got you in that situation. If you're eating French cuisine and high-end restaurants every day with lots of butter and not exercising, well, and you're not going to be very happy right i've known people that have traded their all their wealth for their happiness right for their house for their health right i'm talking millions of dollars to get their health back and it wasn't going to happen okay and if you're just chasing money uh trust me it's not going to bring you happiness it won't one of the things that money doesn't get you is love, right? And you know you have true love, may it be on an intimate level or a personal level or whatever it is, uh, during the hard times, right? And everybody with money goes through hard times at certain points in their lives. And when, if you have money, if you've gone through hard times and you see certain people disappear, you know that wasn't love. They were there just for the money, right? Hold on to the ones that stuck with you. Okay. I'm late. See ya. Barbarian. Thanks for popping by. Last word is the song called Money is the Root of All Evil. Yeah. Or Biggie would say, more money, more problems, man. More money, more problems. Thanks for answering. My pleasure, man. Okay, gang. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll try to get another stream in before uh before the certain few days of work that really kicks in okay great stream take care you too tree man you too treat man okay hope you guys have a fantastic week bye for now